Does it look good? Looks looks good to me. <clears throat> Welcome right. to Ghosts of Salt Marsh. The alternate ending of Nameless. Yes. Jonas. Marvel has a what if. Oh. This will be a what if in our campaign. I haven't changed anything before, and I, I wrote this before that last session, so. Of craziness. Of craziness. Some of it, the very beginning, actually is similar to what we had, because we were, I did give Luke that very beginning, because he did tell me that was my sister, so. I knew that much, but I didn't know that she was evil. <laughs> Evil's from a point of view. That's right. That's yeah, that's exactly right. Because when Nameless killed somebody, it was just it's a point of view. He's not evil. He just had to do it. Yeah, like slitting a little elf's. Yeah. <laughs> Grace, Did that you tell Grace you. that? Oh yeah, she was not happy with you. She wasn't happy. <laughs> she oh, said, no. "I'll never talk to Eric again." Okay, yeah, just like another Lindsay scenario where mm -hmm. you don't show up for the Halloween party. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. I got my water here. Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. <clears throat> Act one, the reunion. I'm looking for Hannah. Martha climbs off her boat and speaks to the group about Nameless's mother. They inform her she's dead. Martha gets angry, grapples Nameless from behind and brings a knife to his throat. Nameless says she was working with Tharzadu and almost brought him into this world before we stopped her. Jonas? Martha asks. She then releases Nameless and puts down her knife. Nameless removes his mask. How do you know my name? Jonas. Jonas, it's really you, it's Martha. Nameless, hearing the name, recalls it. Martha? Sister! Pretty similar to what we had. Well, close. They embrace, happy to see each other. Nameless tells Martha, I can't believe I found you. You're alive. I've spent months trying to find you. Martha replies, I've spent months trying to find you. I've stopped by numerous cities who held rumors of your presence, but each one said you had gone. They discuss the death of their mother and why she had to die. Martha asks to go see her body. Nameless explains everything to her. He then decides to join Martha on her ship to head back to Salt Marsh. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That kind that kind of happened. Other than when they were nailing her to the <laughs> red slayer. Yeah, yeah, and that's where it deviates. <laughs> Act two, to Salt Marsh. As the boat slows into Salt Marsh ashore, Nameless apologizes to Martha about killing their father. Martha surprisingly understands. Nameless shares how their father beat them and abused and abused them and had to stop. He then apologizes about hurting their mother that night, who, when stepping in to try to stop Nameless, he felt she was standing up for their father and continuing to allow the abuse to happen. Martha is perplexed and states father never hit them. The boat begins to dock and the conversation is placed on hold. After getting off, Nameless starts the conversation back up and states he watched father hit her. Martha tells Nameless she thinks he's confused. She asks what he remembers that night. Nameless tells her he has slowly been piecing that night together. At this moment, Nameless arrives at his home and he tells Martha he wants to introduce her to someone. Ida is present and Nameless introduces the two. That Ida, she's so evil. You told me, I guess she's not evil, but human Save, trafficking. Hey, hey, save <laughs> the many for the few. <clears throat> he tells Martha how he washed ashore with nothing but his staff and couldn't remember anything including his name. He tells her of Ida's selflessness and kindness to not only provide him a place to stay and food, but also trust to confide in her and help him remember what happened that night of the incident. Martha agrees, or, or Martha asks if she can see what Nameless remembers. Ida agrees to host. Act three. Devastation. Shared memories. <clears throat> Nameless works with Ida to go over the night of the incident again for Martha. He speaks of his original memory of an intruder breaking into their home and killing their father. His mission was to find this killer. 
Then Nameless explains that, with the help of Ida, found out that he was the one who killed their father because of the abuse. He even mentions the note which he left that changed from addressing their father to Jonas signing it. Martha watches and corrects a memory, stating Nameless was hit in the head by their father's staff by their mother. The same staff Jonas now has. Nameless mentions arriving to Salt Marsh with just a staff and a skull, which Ida helped attach to the top. Martha also states there was someone else there that night. Yeah. I know. I know. After Nameless had killed their father and their mother was hurt and knocked out, he slowly opened the door. <laughs> there you go, buddy. You're right in the way. What 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 happened? What? <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Cat break. Cat break. Hazel. <laughs> Martha also states there was someone else there that night. After Nameless had killed their father and their mother was hurt and knocked out, he slowly opened the side door and told a cloaked man, It's done. The man then walked in and dragged their father outside, and when the rain stopped, built a fire to burn the body. Nameless only referred to the man as the Anomaly. Nameless finishes the s saying the name with Martha at the same time. Martha recalls watching from a distance but not being able to hear anything. Nameless shares that the Anomaly asked he be called that because he was the furthest he had been from the light and had deviated from his original timeline. With this new information, Nameless remembers more of that night. He shares with Martha that the man had seen the future. Her and mother were going to die the next day unless Nameless stopped it. Father would become lost and alone, leading him down a path of vengeance, killing innocent people out of anger. If Nameless killed father, then not only would other innocent people live, but also Martha and their mother. Martha confusingly asks the man the, the anomaly. How could this man know all of this? And why did Nameless believe it? Nameless replies, because it was dad. Nameless recalls the anomaly pulling his, their dad's skull out from the ashes and fire. He explained to Nameless he had gone back in time multiple times trying to save Martha and mother, but no matter what he did, they still ended up dying. Nameless asks how he was able to go back in time. The anomaly would only tell Nameless he knew a powerful being in the South. He told Nameless he feels he was always unsuccessful because the past cannot cha be changed, but the future can. So, he tasked Nameless with killing their father in the hopes that it would disrupt the timeline enough to save both Martha and their mother. Nameless then recalls the anomaly pulling out a scroll and reading it then placing a finger in the middle of his forehead. And when he pulled back, a bright string of light came with it. This is where Nameless's memory ends. Martha stated, Nameless then fell limp as the anomaly placed the light in a small vial. Martha then became horrified and describes how the anomaly looked straight at her, smiled, then came inside the home. She was so frightened she couldn't move even though it was dad. The anomaly knelt down next to the mother and touched her. He then stumbled over Martha and asked that she also burn his body. He then touched his forehead and placed a string of light, touched her forehead and then placed a string of light into the same vial before collapsing on the floor. This is where her memory ends of that night as well. Act four. The last night in Salt Marsh. Before everyone lays to rest for the night, Martha stops by Nameless's quarters to say goodnight. She finds him in his chair reading a map. He puts it away and walks outside, asking her if she has everything she needs for the night. He walks her back to her room. Before she opens the door, she catches something in the distance. What is that? She asks. Nameless spots her gaze and replies, that is the cliff where many seeking answers go. 
They offer up their life and jump from the highest point, and if they live, they find purpose that carries them into the next day. Martha walks into her quarters getting situated for bed. Nameless tells her how glad he was to find her and that tomorrow they will pack up and head home. Martha reminisces about their home and how their father always took care of them. She tells Nameless their father really loved their mother and that he treated her well. Martha asks Nameless why the anomaly didn't take her memories of Jonas's name and face, but masked her name and face from Jonas. Nameless says he isn't sure. As Nameless attempts to say goodnight, Martha asks him, Jonas, what would you do for love? What would you do, he asks back. Until I love someone like father loved mother, I'm not sure, but I do know I would spend months traveling thousands of miles to find my long lost brother. Nameless smiles. You, she asks again. Nameless thinking says, anything it takes. Good night, Martha. In the early morning, Nameless is awoken by banging on his door. They demand he come out at once. Nameless promptly gets up and yells back, just a minute, as he gets dressed. The voice has become stern and demanding. As Nameless finishes getting dressed, his door is kicked in by one of the Salt Marsh guards. A flood of them enters his quarters. The captain informs Nameless he is being arrested for the murder of his father. The other guards attempt to apprehend Nameless as he fights back, ultimately giving in to their demands. They push and shove him through Salt Marsh to the public square where a crowd and judge await. The crowd remains hushed as some whispers are heard. The judge begins. This is the trial of Jonas, formerly known as Nameless, who has confessed to killing his unarmed father in his home. You're going to, you're going to prison for a long time. <laughs> You didn't do anything wrong. Act five. Wait, I'm going to prison for a long time and I didn't do anything wrong? No, he didn't do anything. Your father. Oh. Act five. The trial. Nameless is in shock and becomes worried. He then wonders who told the council about his act. After the guards tie his hands behind his back, another kicks his legs out, forcing him to kneel. The guard then tears off Nameless's mask and slowly places a noose over his head. The crowd gets louder with jeers. Nameless scans the crowd frantically, hurt that his sister might have turned him in for on a crime his own father asked him to commit. He then hears his sister in the distance screaming his name, Jonas! She attempts to make her way closer, but the guards are holding her back. She reaches for her brother as tears stream down her face. She is in a panic. The judge then calls the witness to the stand. Thomas. <clears throat> the crowd quiets as some shushes fan across the square. The crowd parts as the witnesses make their way up. Nameless zeroes in on the figure. With her eyes towards the ground, Ida steps forth. Oh, my nails. <laughs> she looks up with puffy red eyes and says, I'm sorry. To Nameless, though, she is too far to be heard. The judge calls the trial to order, then waves for Nottis to come up. Nottis waves his hands and casts a zone of truth, encircling both Nameless and Ida. This is kind of similar to the other trial. It, we had, it, it's pretty close. Which is, I wrote this before that, so. <clears throat> he then asked Ida if she will abide by the zone and speak only truth. I will, she says. Nottis turns Nameless with some hesitation, asks the same of him. Yes. Nameless responds. The judge asks the witness her name along with how she is acquainted with the defendant. Ida answers clearly. The judge then asks Ida to recall what she informed the counsel regarding the night Nameless killed his father. She does so, but is vague. Nameless, out of frustration from Ida's lack of context, yells, that's not what happened. The judge quickly cuts Nameless off and demands that the accused remain silent until the witness's testimony is over. Ida recalls multiple times Nameless admitting to killing his father and names all of those who were witnesses of the confession. Finally, she informs the judge and crowd she fears Nameless might hurt others as just recently he took part in killing his mother as well. Nameless again yells out saying, that isn't the whole story. The judge snaps at Nameless, one more outburst from you, sir, and your rope will tighten. 
Nameless is nearly salivating with anger, his face beating red. The judge then asks Nameless to state his name and how he knows the witness. Jonas, she was once a friend. He replies through his teeth. The judge then rattles off questions about that night. Is it true you were there the night your father died? Yes. Was your father expecting you that night? No. Did you let yourself into the side door where your father was, or did you knock and request entrance? I walked in. That's what I always would have. The judge interrupts Nameless's reasoning and stammering. I just want a confirmation, sir. Nothing more. Were you carrying a knife that night? Yes. Some of the crowd begins to mutter to their neighbors. Now listen very carefully and answer just the same, sir. Did you intend on using that knife on your father? Nameless remains silent. Must I remind you, sir, that an omission of response will be seen as an admission of guilt? The judge repeats the question slower and more clearly. And may I also remind you, you cannot lie within the circle. Nameless stays silent. Sir, you must, Nameless interrupts with a painful and held back, yes. The crowd gasps from Nameless's answer. One man from the back yells, murderer. The crowd calls order, the judge calls order until the crowd quiets. Jonas, did you kill your father? There's a long pause before Nameless answers, yes. The crowd bursts in the shouting with calls to kill Nameless. They throw objects and trash on the stage, some hitting him. One heavier object catches Nameless's lip, making it bleed. Nameless attempts to yell over the boisterous crowd, but is drawn out. He musters up his response again and yells over at them, Yes, but he asked me to! The crowd quickly quiets. Some gasps are heard while others take advantage to call Nameless a liar. The judge, confused, follows up. What do you mean he asked you to? He asked you to kill him? Yes. More of the crowd calls out, liar, he's lying. Another yells, he can't, he's in the circle. Another, we should have kept you dead. <laughs> the judge turns to Ida. Do you recall in these memories that Jonas's father asked to be killed by him? Ida replies, no. Jonas, when did your father ask you to kill him? The judge inquires. Earlier that night. Sir, you said your father was not expecting you that night. My father of this time wasn't. What do you mean by that boy? Makes sense, will you? He came from the future, my father. He called himself the anomaly and told me how horrible of a man he would become after the death of my mother and sister, so he asked me to kill him. He told me I could save their lives along with countless others. A handful of the crowd starts to burst into laughter. Martha yells out in, to the crowd in anger, he's telling the truth. The judge steps away from his podium and walks up closely to the nameless. And you truly believe this man came from the future and was your father? The judge asks sincerely. Nameless spits out the blood from his lip and looks up at the judge. Yes. The judge returns back to his podium where he takes a few notes. He then returns to the questioning. Did your father of this time request or consent to you killing him? Nameless remains silent. Answer the question, the judge cries. No. No, you won't answer the question or no, he did not request nor consent. He did not request nor consent. The judge takes notes. Did you leave a letter after the murder stating, and I quote, you did this to yourself, signed Jonas. Is this your signature, sir? The judge shows him the letter. Yes. Motion and talk in the crowd intensifies. <clears throat> Moving on, did you find your mother while out on official work for the council? It seems so. Yes or no, sir? Yes. Did your mother perish during an altercation that occurred just yesterday? Yes. Did you take part in her death? 
Yes. The crowd continues to get worked up. The judge clears his throat before stating, <clears throat> You may elaborate on this question as it deals with several of our citizens in official capacity. Yes, but she had joined Tharzadun in his quest to destroy our realm. Thank you, Jonas. I have concluded my questioning. Please allow for a few moments of private deliberation until we declare our final verdict. Mm. The guards aggressively lift Jonas to his feet by his tied arms behind his back and tell him to stand on the wooden stool. They place on the noose to remove any they pull on the noose to remove any slack while waving off some of the crowd spitting and trying to throw items at Nameless. Nameless looks out into the crowd and sees those he helped these past few months turn on him, calling for his death. They snarl and call out their own judgment upon him. Nameless then sees his sister to the side, still being held back by a guard. She is crying and defeated, awaiting, just like Nameless, on the judge's next words. The judge is quick with his verdict and returns to the podium with a scroll. <clears throat> I have here the final verdict. It is signed by the members of the council. <laughs> Jonas, formerly known as Nameless, on the first count of murder regarding your mother, we, the authority of Salt Marsh, find you not guilty. The crowd erupts in boos and yelling. Order, order, the judge says. <clears throat> on the second count of murder regarding your father, we, the authority of Salt Marsh find you guilty on the grounds of murdering an innocent. The crown breaks into cheering so loud that they can barely hear the end of the verdict. The judge projects, for your punishment, we shall sentence you to death by hanging. The crowd continues, yet Martha can be heard over all of them. She screams for nameless as he wrestles with his ropes, attending to break free to no avail. Ida urgently walks up to the stage and quietly advises the council that Nameless must be without his staff with the affixed skull, as this is his spell focus. Get the bell ringing. <clears throat> this will ensure that he does not use any magic that might interfere with this sentence. She also makes sure they take Nameless's vial of universal solvent, which he gave away <laughs> very easily to... <laughs> To Jared. I never got that back. <laughs> Nameless, still struggling, tells Ida as she tries to walk off, You know I never wanted to hurt anybody. Ida stops and slightly turns to Nameless. I once believed that to be true. She then continues, disappearing in the rowdy crowd. The judge spends what seems like minutes trying to bring order to the crowd. Once he does, he asks Nameless if he has any final words. Out of breath, with sweat dripping from his soaking hair, Nameless grits his teeth and lashes out in anger. I helped not only save this town, but this realm from the destruction of Tharsadun, and this is what is afforded to me? Why you people sat there eating, drinking, frolicking about without a care in the world, we were out there putting our lives on the line. For you of all people, Maybe the cult should have ran through you like, the, like a plague brought forth by the judgment of the gods themselves. I sacrificed everything for you, yet you persecute me for trying to stop my sister and mother from dying? To stop thousands more from dying? I gave my life for you. I lost. I lost my mother for you. And this is my reward? Away with you, Salt Marsh, until I see you in the Nine Hells. Some of the crowd ridicule Nameless while others laugh. A chant starts up. Hang him, hang him, hang him. Getting louder with each demand. Nameless looks over towards the judge. I want my sister to have the staff. It belonged to our father. And I want to say goodbye to her. The judge looks over to the guards and gives them a nod. The one holding the staff hands it to Martha, and they make way for her. Martha slowly walks up to Nameless, sobbing. She hugs Nameless tightly and says, buried in his chest, I know the truth, Jonas. You did what Dad asked of you. And she is barely comprehensible. 
Thank you, sister. Truly, thank you. Nameless says sincerely. That's enough, the judge calls out. He motions to the guard who pulled Martha back. He then motions towards the guard next to Nameless who checks the knot of the rope to a who checks the knot of the rope to a pillar and then kicks the stool out from underneath him. The crowd gasps. Martha screams. Nameless falls a few feet and starts to frantically gasp for air. He sways violently side to side trying to kick up for any type of relief. The crowd starts cheering. One yells out, what a waste of Welligar's time! Nameless's face begins to turn blood red, his veins surfacing. Martha calls out, no, please, make it stop! Nameless's feet slowly stop kicking. The crowd cheers even more loudly. Nameless's face then starts turning back to its original color. The crowd quiets down and only whispers are left. Nameless is still gasping for air before one guard yells, Hey! Then prods Nameless with his quarterstaff. Nameless sways gently away from the quarterstaff, defying gravity, before slowly swinging back. Galen yells out, The skull! A nearby guard takes the staff from Martha and grabs the skull. His hand glides through before the image waves and dissipates. A knife comes flying over the crowd with a spectral hand holding its hilt. It cuts the rope of the noose cleanly as Nameless collapses onto the ground, gasping for air. As soon as the guards see this, they rush the stage. The knife drops behind Nameless, who is now free from his bindings. He stands up with one hand grasping the skull, and the other becoming engulfed with a flame flickering orange and blue. His eyes reflect the fire he holds as he begins to smirk. The guards reach Nameless and tackle him to the ground. The skull flies from Nameless's hands and rolls towards Martha and another guard. Gellin yells, The skull! Destroy it! One guard aggressively lifts Nameless onto his knees while another grabs his hair and pulls on it to hold steady his head. The guard with Martha grabs the skull and brings it high into the air. Standing over Nameless, a guard draws his sword and brings it back on Nameless's neck. The guard with Martha throws down the skull. It shatters into large pieces as Martha is seen reaching out in distress. The guard over Nameless brings his sword high into the air. A bright string of light weaves away from the skull before splitting into two, one heading towards Martha and the other Nameless. Martha looks to see a small broken vial in the middle of the shattered skull. The light enters through Martha's forehead and then Nameless's. Jonas, I remember, Martha says to herself. Nameless then sobs, oh gods, what have I done? What have I done? Martha yells, wait, putting one hand out towards the armed guard over Nameless and the other towards the judge. Panting with exhaustion, she looks towards the distant sky and asks the judge, when people of Saltmarsh jump off that cliff and perish, is that considered murder? The judge apathetically responds, that is suicide and there are no laws of salt marsh against it. Martha then quickly asks again, and are you not trying Jonas according to the laws of salt marsh? Yes, of course, but I don't see how this is relevant. Martha interrupts, then he is innocent. The crowd gasps. And how did you come to that conclusion, silly girl? The judge asks. Martha turns to Nameless with tears in her eyes because he is my father. The crowd goes silent before someone yells out, she's lying. Another calls out, she's a liar like her brother. The quiet voice in the very front of the crowd points, no, she can't. The circle remains. Martha runs over to Nameless and holds him. Dad, Martha, my girl, I'm so sorry. Nameless says, it's okay. You were just trying to protect us, Martha says. The judge walks up to Martha and Nameless huddled. Are you the father of this girl? The judge asks. Nameless struggles, but is able to look up at the judge. Yes. How so? The judge inquires. Nameless, taking a second to catch his breath, asks if the guard over him can stand down. The judge waves the guard off. Nameless says, I, the anomaly, came to me in the past and told me who he would become. 
Because he couldn't change the future, he needed his past to do it for him. He brought me one day into the future and asked that I kill him before he turned into a monster. He promised me my wife and child would also live. After I did so, he altered the memories of myself, Martha, and Hannah, my wife. My wife. It was a strategy to alter the timeline as much as possible while protecting us from history repeating itself. He then, call, he then killed himself, saying a wise friend once spoke of the balance needed in the universe, or else they'd come looking. Then only one of me remained, as intended. My daughter and I's memories placed in the skull was a failsafe in case it didn't work, but it did. My girls lived. That was until Hannah fell into the hands of Tharzadun. I'm so sorry, Martha. Maybe she wouldn't have if I watched over her. If I still lost you and your mother, I had to protect everyone else from who I would become. Martha consoles Nameless. It's okay, Dad. The judge walks back to the council. After some time, he steps back to his podium and declares, due to the unique circumstances of this case, we, the authority of Salt Marsh, have deemed this case a mistrial on the grounds of inadmissible evidence. Jonas is free to go. The crowd becomes angry, with many of them yelling at the judge and counsel. Martha assists her father up to his feet. I don't think we're welcome here anymore. Ready to go home, Jonas says. Martha happily agrees. Act 6. Home. The final page. Martha and Jonas are a day into their journey. Martha jokes with her father about how strange it would be to wash up to a strange city not knowing your name, where you're from, or any experience you had. She shares how hard she worked on finding him and jokes, good thing I care for my brother as much as I care for my dad. Otherwise, I think Ida would have gotten the best of you. Jonas agrees. You're probably right. And I don't blame her, though. She did what she felt was right at the time. She always does. And hundreds of people in need are housed and fed because of it. I don't think Ida has ever been wrong. Jonas shares about the mask he wore and how he wore it to have no identity until he found her. He shares about Welligar and what he did for Jonas. He also shares several stories of the grand adventures his friends went on. Then why aren't you with them partying at the snapping line? Martha asks. Because I have you now. I'm sure I'll see them again, Jonas says. Sundown is nearing, and Martha stops to look around. There's a city way off in the distance. She checks her map, confused. Martha asks, What is this place, Dad? You said there were vampires up north, so we had to take a detour. But we've been traveling south the entire time. Home is on the complete other side of this map. I really miss your mother, Martha, Jonas says. I do too, Dad, Martha replies. I'm really sorry about losing her. Not just her, but also to Tharsidu, Jonas sincerely says. Martha agrees. Jonas says, I just really miss her. And I wish she was back. I'm really sorry, Martha. Martha comforts Jonas. Really? It's okay, Dad. Jonas says again, no. I'm really sorry. Martha again replies, it's okay, Dad. Martha looks down to see only the hilt of a knife in her father's hand. She shakes as a cold wave flows over her body. Her hands cusp under the hilt as her blood begins to pull in her palms. She looks up as Jonas grabs onto her and slowly brings her down to the patchy grass. Dad, why? Martha says as some blood builds on the side of her lips before running down her chin. Jonas reassures Martha with a slight smile. It's okay. I'm gonna fix this. We'll be back with your mother soon, okay? It's going to work this time, I promise. Dad, Martha says with her last breath. 
Jonas stands up with the bloody knife in hand, still looking down at Martha's cold body. In that same position, Jonas stands outside at night in the rain. He slowly pulls his hood over his head and looks up. He hears muffled talking, then louder arguing. A bloody scream and yelling are heard before a flash of light radiates from the windows in front of him. There is a moment of silence until a door slowly creaks open, revealing a silhouette figure holding a bloody knife. It's done. What? Okay, explain more of the end. So he goes back in time again. And he's repeating the cycle of that night where he has tasked him an older self or a younger technically but a past self of his to kill his dude again yes and he's trying to repeat the process thinking that this time it almost worked because they didn't die the next day martha his wife and they lasted longer they lasted longer Mm -hmm. so he is instead of just living with one he is going to try to gamble and get them both back just not never never satisfied <laughs> never satisfied oh, you want a happy ending yes you wanted them you wanted to die being hung hanged i was ready for it <laughs> i was i'll say oh yeah well it's game over <laughs> Eda's always right though isn't she i'm glad that you came to that realization that I, she, yeah i wrote that line on purpose she said she was afraid he might hurt again and guess what hmm. he hurt again well, that was pretty good. That was uh, way different than what happened. Oh, yeah, obviously. I enjoyed what happened as well. <laughs> they Either definitely way. both died in that one. Yeah, so yeah. so it, then then results still happen, right? Wait, did Martha die? Uh, yeah, all f- went... <laughs> hit it across the whole, the whole place, remember? No. I'm pulling on you with my brain fog. In the middle of Salt Marsh, they were all fighting. And she was like, Oh, yeah, she died. Everybody. Yeah. No, that was Hannah that died. Oh, Hannah. Yeah. No. Hannah died a while ago. When she was like half that weird okay, creature. Yeah. So when did Martha died Martha when she died. was like blowing up everybody and you guys surrounded oh, her? And she's like, Yeah. yeah and, right. they, and they cleaved her head off. Nah, and she wasn't her. my sister then. She was a different person. Oh, she was your sister. <laughs> She was. Yeah. She okay. She did die. I tried to ask her to come to our side, and mm-hmm. yeah, so they both died. Yeah, see, in that version. They, see, and then you go back in time again. Yeah. Same. All half that could still work. It could, but we had what happened. Oh man. Yeah, this was supposed to be slowly like coming out, but then like we started cutting the sessions. And I was like, oh, no. How could, how could that have been slow going out? <laughs> well, most of that is finding my sister and just explaining everything up to that point. Yeah. Which is we already had memories of me thinking I was abused, then finding out that. Uh, but, uh, okay, you, you about blew my mind when you said, I'm your dad. That was that was a little too much for me. <laughs> That's too, one too many twists. That, that was... Uh, Oh my goodness. They're all the same person. The anomaly. Hmm. Nameless. That's pretty good. And Jonas. That's pretty good. Yeah. I I didn't see that one coming. At all. Good. Especially not the end. Oh yeah. It, it made sense. It just my brain wasn't following it. And he had to travel south so he could meet that person to help him go back in time. She's like, why are we going south? Doesn't make any sense. Alchemist Order. Oh my goodness. Tying it in. <laughs> well, good job, Eric. So when you write your novel? That, that's it. That's the novel. Man. 